And this example is from Tredegar Park in St. Catherine and was recorded in 1977. batteries of drums vary from one settlement of territory to another. Yet in each, the gender relationship is of paramount importance. The Maroons of Portland, that is of Moore Town and its environs, play a set of chromanty drums, fairly tall, slender, cylindrical, and slightly tapered. On these chromanty printing drums is played drum language, which calls the community together to participate in ceremonies and rituals. The secret language known only to the specialist drummers and post holders is also used to communicate with ancestral spirits and for invocation at the start of such events. The male drum or roller plays an ostinato pattern, a steady unchanging characteristic rhythm, while the cutter, as in other genres, is the lead instrument, guiding movement with cuts and breaks. Maroons of Scots Hall play the gumbe accompanied by a bamboo cutter rested across an X-shaped stand, somewhat like a sawhorse, and referred to as a quart. The lead drum of the Akampong Maroons is also the square frame stool-like gumbe, and usually completing that battery are a bass drum and two side drums. The gumbe cult of healing of Lakovia in St. Elizabeth also employs a single-headed square gumbe from which the group takes its name. Originally used for social dance in its original form in West Africa, the dense, potent beats have been used to accompany a vigorous dance said to remove the effects of evil spirits which manifest as varying degrees of physical imbalance and illness. Firstly, gumbe. also mention our psalms which support Dinkimini and Benta ceremonies of St. Mary. In Dinkimini, a wake practice, instrumentation is governed by availability. It is possible to find bottles struck by nails, graters, bamboo scrapers, shakas without handles made from seed or stone-filled gourds or stoppered joints of bamboo, rhythm sticks and bamboo clappers. Commonly used also are bamboo stamping tubes used to maintain rhythmic integrity. The stamping tubes are bamboo poles with the inner portion of the joints removed, allowing for free passage of air, creating a booming note when struck on a rock or on the ground. Just southwest of Highgate in Minihal, as I said before, a large empty oil drum cut in half is played with the hands with the player employing a style similar to the Congo-derived kumina and tambo drums. The benta, also of Congo derivation, is a tradition that recognizes an all-powerful god and a pantheon of gods which control the natural forces. Of interest is the lead instrument, a glist idiophone. In fact, 
a four or five jointed length of bamboo from which a string is lifted from the outer stalk. This is held firm by a tight wrapping of cord that prevents further stripping. It requires two players who sit at both ends, one playing variations of a 3-3-2 pattern with two sticks, while the other slides a large calabash resonator along the string. So you would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Traditional drummers play an important role in their communities. They are virtuosos, but specialists in their own traditions. As such, they are deeply aware of the significance of each variation and gradation in tone, volume, pitch, although indefinite, tempo, and intensity. For the most part, traditional drummers have developed virtuosity through long years of training and devotion to the art. In some traditions, as in Etu, the drumming skills remain in one family, and the knowledge is passed from father to son, from uncle to nephew. In other traditions, a fairly long apprenticeship is served on a drum of lesser importance or a percussion instrument before the position of master drummer is assumed. The drummer must learn a wide repertoire of combinations of beats and rhythmic phrases and be familiar with a vast appropriate literature of songs. In socio-religious dinky movement, the dance stance is a bent or relaxed knee position with both knees held closely together. The supporting leg or front foot moving in directional progression, while the back foot placed on the ball of the foot executes a dab step to the front of the body and behind, facilitating the progress forward or sideways, while the hips circle and the shoulders and arms move in opposition to the feet. There may be dipping, fainting and breaks, pelvic thrusts and partial extension of the leg. These complex patterns are supported by the beat a strong pulse on the first beat of the bar and the juxtaposition of straight rhythm and irregular subdivision in the beat. In the case of religious ritual, not only must the rhythm support the movement, but the players must also grow in intensity, in an ebb and flow to control the building tension in the faithful and invite or repel possession as is appropriate. In many instances, in Brookings and Etu, for example, it's not unusual to find that the lead drummer is also the lead singer. During ritual observances or plays, it is a priest or priestess, the shepherd, captain, king, queen, bishop, whoever leads. But it is a drummer that initiates and controls the pace, whips up enthusiasm and fervor, the relaxation or tension of the participants. The drummers must make the dancers move as one, must direct or drive, must be compelling and insistent, must lift to heights of psychic excitement and then release the dancers so that they may return to this reality. Women drummers. The playing of the drum in Jamaica is still a man's prerogative rather than a woman's. This practice harks back to the African continent where the secret traditions of initiation rites and passage from childhood through puberty to womanhood were attended by female drummers. These practices did not survive the middle passage and women's participation in traditional drumming disappeared. Yet they still had to carry the beat forward with shakas and rhythm sticks, graters, tambourines and hand clapping. In the 1960s, this writer was exposed to drum rhythms as a participant in the dance theater presentation, Roots and Rhythms, mounted in celebration of Jamaica's independence. It brought together dancers, singers, and musicians, some of whom became the nucleus of the National Dance Theater Company, led then by current artistic director, Professor Rex Nettleford, and Eddie Thomas. During that summer of 1962, Classes in Haitian dance were conducted by the late Lavinia Williams on the UWI's Mona campus, part of a continuing series of dance courses mounted by the then extramural department. Lavinia's daughter, T. Lavinia, taught the required traditional drumming styles and technique. In that class were Eleanor Wint and myself. Later, Wint went on to sing and drum with the Jamaican folk singers led by Dr. Olive Lewin 
and I became musical director of the National Dance Theatre Company. Learning Jamaican traditional rhythms and patterns suitable for dance classes from master drummer Ronan Critchlow. After an attachment at the UWI's music unit as a teacher of traditional African and Caribbean rhythms on the conga drum, a professional shift from teaching Spanish in high school to folk music research at the Jamaica School of Music allowed me to pass on what I had learned and to develop my own method of notation and a methodology for developing a sense of rhythm and creativity in children, as many of the school's graduates were absorbed into the education system in schools in both rural and urban areas.